Good morning, Genesis. Can we all stand this morning as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Amen.
testimony this morning that rain came and wind blew, that my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make, say I'm gonna make it through. Cause my house is built on you. We praise you, Heavenly Father.
with fear sometimes I think fear is one of those things that we think we overcome it and the enemy just brings it right back in front of us and I just want to take a moment to declare this morning that I will not fear because I know the maker of the heavens and the earth and he holds me in his hands so we're gonna come against fear in the mighty name of Jesus this morning amen
the promises of God. We speak life this morning. God, give us strength in the process to lift our eyes only to you, God.
move in every situation this morning. And we will boldly stand and prophesy the promises of God this morning over our lives. We speak peace this morning and we speak joy this morning. And we declare healing this morning in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our comforter this morning. preconceived ideas this morning and we just say God come and do whatever you want to do this morning God come and surprise us this morning in our minds and our ears so that we could clearly hear your voice this morning God. God will give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus we pray amen and amen you can be seated this morning amen Amen. Why don't you put your hands together, love on the Lord today. Amen. If you're president in the house today, I want you to look at one or two people and say, the winds blew and the rains came, but we made it through. Come on, can you tell somebody that? The winds came. The winds blew, the rain came. We made it through. And can you look at somebody else and say, so I'm so glad you are here. Now, let's give God a big clap offering inside of this house today. Amen. God bless you. Wow. Genesis Church family, it is so good to see you today. And we know that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. And we're just so privileged not only to have the presence of the Lord here, but we are so happy today to have representatives from our state office, Church of God, to some executive people, some very important people, people whom I love. And today, we just want to honor Bishop 
Morris, Randy Morris, and Lady Peggy Morris, would you please stand so that people can see you? These are our leaders in the Church of God, Tampa State office. Bishop Morris and Lady Morris, we are just so happy to have you here with us today, and you'll be hearing more from them at the end of the service. Thank you so much for coming out today. I'm so blessed to know that you're here. And so today, we're going to be looking at a topic I think that fits very appropriately with what we've experienced this week. We're going to be talking about in our series, this is part three of our series, Perseverance. Say it with me, Perseverance. We're going to be looking at faith against all odds. Wow. Faith against all odds. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for the opportunity once again to come together as the people of God, the corporate body of God. Father, we thank you because your presence is so evident among us today. And as you always do, Father, we know that you were meeting needs even before we stood to stand to speak today. We thank you, God, because you are so unique. Thank you, Father, because you know us, you made us, you know all about us, you have every hair on our head numbered, dear Father. Therefore, we know that you have our needs under control. We don't have to worry, and we don't have to fear. And so right now, Father, I pray that you would release any fears, any doubts, any anxieties over this house. Let it go in the name of Jesus, so that we may focus in on what you have to say to us today. So I pray, God, that you would till the soil of the mind, that as we begin to plant your word seed, that it will yield forth a harvest in our personal lives that we never thought possible. And Father, help us to stand with fearful, faith, fearless, faithful movement forward, dear God. Help us, O oh God, to embrace who we are in you and to anticipate the best that's ahead of us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. As I begin to look at the storm, as we begin to see how this thing was churning out in the Gulf, I talk with uh, with Rachel, and, and I talked with some others, and my wife and I, we begin to sit down and we look at this map of how this storm, this massive storm was going to hit Tallahassee directly. But we believe God, and we pray for all of those who have been affected by this storm. But I want to speak to you, Tallahassee, this morning, because I believe as we begin to look at how this storm navigated toward Tallahassee, all of a sudden, it is as if God spread his arms out over Tallahassee and nudged the storm just a little bit. Are you with me? And, and while we were bracing for the very worst, God saw us through. I believe that's something that we should embrace today. I believe that's what the word is about today. Faith against all odds. When things come against us that we cannot stand, but we cannot understand, when things come against us that we think is going to demolish us, demean us, take our value, or take us out, we can believe that God will nudge it to the side. Can you tell somebody God's nudging? God, God's doing some nudging today. And so I want to begin with just a very simple scripture that I think we're all familiar with. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 11. I mean, verse 1 through 2. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 2. It simply reads this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. So when we look at that scripture, the question comes to mind, what is faith? The writer opens it up and he describes what faith is. He gives us the definition. He said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things that are not seen. In essence, faith is the assurance of things that we hope for, the evidence or the conviction of things not seen. I have the assurance that no matter what I face in life, that God is going to make it okay. I have the conviction that no matter what storms come in my life or what storms come against us, that we're going to make it through. Are you with me? And then we begin to look at this because he defines faith, the writer does, and he moves from defining faith to move to a historical example or examples of faith. Now, in the second verse, he says, for by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. Look at somebody and say, I got a testimony today. Come on, tell us. Listen, if you're sitting in this house today, and you, you knew what could have happened. You got a testimony today. Let me put it another way. By faith, many of the Old Testament saints are good examples. They, they are good illustrations that show us how to live by faith against all odds. So we're reminded in Hebrews chapter 11, 
Verse 3, the examples of Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, Sarah and Isaac, Moses and so on. And it goes throughout verse 31 with the examples of Rahab. So we pick up in verse 32, and, and I've got to tell you, I love the way the writer begins Hebrew eleven thirty-two 32 through 35. He says, and what more shall I say? It's a question. For the time would, would fail me. It would, it would not allow me to tell you of Gideon and Barack, not Barack Obama. Please don't mistake that. It would not, it would not give me that. I don't have the time to tell you about Gideon and Barack and Samson and, and Jephthah. Also, David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the, vi- the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. How many strong in this house today? Oh my God, my God. Listen, they became valiant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women who received their dead raised to life again. Others who were tortured, not accepting the deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Look at somebody say, now that's some faith. Oh, my God. I get happy every time I read that because no matter what I'm going through, and we all get challenged at times, I can read this book and know if they made it through, I'm going to make it through. If God did it then, he's going to do it now. And if you do it now, there are some things that we're going to face that we can't even imagine. God's going to take us through that as well. How many are anticipating life ahead? Come on. Come on. Talk talk to me. How many are anticipating what God is going to do ahead of you? If, if he's doing it right now, God has already gone before you and he's making a way out of no way. I need you to give God a clap offering right there. He's already made a way through the obstacle that you have not even seen yet. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It's not even entered into the hearts of men the things that God have in store for you. And I'm not just talking about in heaven. I'm talking about right here too. That's a good place for an Amen. amen. <laughs> so when we look at this, No matter how difficult the path before them, they lived by faith. And that's important for us to understand today. We need to embrace that. It's one thing to say it, but when those tough times come, can we really embrace and live by faith? God honored their faith and gave us their faith as an example so that we too may live by faith against all odds. So when we look at the term odds, it is defined as inequities or degrees of unlikeness. It is the probability, say with me, probability. It is the probability that one thing is so or will happen rather than another. We're always looking at the one thing rather than the other. We're always looking at the worst rather than the blessings that's ahead of us. Now watch this now. The term odds also reflect the posture of second-guessing the power of God's possibility. When the odds are against us and we fall into fear, what we have done is that now we are second-guessing what God is able to do. It is focusing on the probabilities that are against us in the moment. Now, have you ever felt like you were in an impossible place? Or like you were praying for the impossible? I got five. I'm going over here. (laughs) Have you ever been there where you were in this impossible place or perhaps you were praying for something where in the deep recesses of your mind, you thought it might not be possible? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Listen, it is then that Satan began to play tricks on your mind. Let me leave you with this encouraging message right up front. When you have faith, There is a supernatural power from God that is released in all the impossible places inside of your life. I'm going to say it again because nobody got happy. That was a good place to clap right there. When you have faith, there is a supernatural power of God that is released in all the impossible places in your life. In essence, what may seem impossible with man, now God steps in and he brings the possibility of the kingdom of God into focus. Now, real faith, real faith operates and produces within the realm of God's possibility. Look at somebody say, if you ever feel fear, you need to get into the realm of God's possibility. You see, because fear is a realm. 
that's created by the anti-God is called Satan. He, he wants you to get into fear. But God says, listen, in order for me to do what I need to do through you and with you, you need to come into my realm. Are you with me? Can, can, can somebody say I'm stepping out of the realm of fear and into the realm of possibility? <laughs> listen, despite how impossible your situation may look, we need to begin to function daily in the realm of possibility. So hang in there. Persevere. Watch and wait. That's why the Bible tells us to watch as well as pray. Watch. Yes, you can see the storm, but look for God in the storm. I'm going over here. Nobody heard me over there. Watch that. You can have problems with what you see, but if you look long enough with a discerning spirit by faith, you begin to see beyond the storm. You can now see the shores that's on the other side of the storm. I need somebody to say amen right there. Because see, as long as Satan got you stuck in the boat paying attention to the storm, he's not believe, you're not believing that God is going to bring you through the storm and you're going to see what's on the other side of the storm. Like I said, when the mountain, the Bible says if you have just a, a little bit of a, a faith as a, a grain of seed, a seed of a mustard seed, he said you can speak to the mountain and you say the mountain would do what? But what if the mountain don't move? I have to believe that God is going to give me the power and the strength to tunnel through it. Oh, he's going to give me the endurance to go around it. But one thing for sure, like I told you a couple of weeks ago, when I look in my rear view, of, rear view mirror of life, I know that whatever mountain that was facing me is going to be behind me. Come on. I don't know what you're facing today, but I need you to have faith today against all odds because whatever you're facing, you've got to believe that whatever is in front of you will be behind you. God will never leave you and God will never forsake you. Amen. Can you tell somebody God will show up? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Paul states that our faith understanding defies human logic and reasoning. Are you with me? Our faith, say it with me, faith understanding. Our faith understanding defies human logic and reasoning. Here's what the writer said in Hebrews 11 and 3. He says, by faith we understand. Not by human logic and reasoning. He says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Because human logic would not allow, allow us to believe that God can speak something into existence. Okay, I'm going over here. Nobody listen to me over here. I'm going over here. I'm going over here. I'm going over here. Human logic will cause you to defy the possibility of God because you will say, listen, with my human reason, it's no way we can go get through this. It's no way we can make it through this. But God is saying, wait a minute, you need to take a step back from your natural logic and you need to get into my realm and you need to see what I can see. Because when you get in my realm, even though there's a storm like the song say, I can see clearly now. The God said, if you want to see clearly, you got to get in my realm. Let's keep, let's keep reading. Watch this. He said, by faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Somebody said, that's faith understanding. He starts with nothing and he just speaks. We have no sense realm of anything existing before God said, let that be. Other than what he created fell into darkness. But what about what happened before the darkness? He created everything with the power of his words. Let me restate that because the scripture is going to restate it because that's how we said by the word of his power. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. The probability of God creating all things from nothing is against all. Look at Hebrews 1, chapter 3. He goes a step further to say that God upholds, all, somebody say all things. all things, all things by the word of his what? Power. He didn't say by the power of his word. I'm going to tell you why. Listen to this now. In essence, God speaks from his potential. He speaks from his all-powerful and unlimited capacity. In essence, watch this. 
what God says he know he can do. God, God is not like a man who's going to lie. You see, many of us make promises that we can't fulfill. And so we're not speaking from our potential. We're speaking from our pleasure. We want to please you. But what, what God is saying, whatever I say, I have the capacity to fulfill. So when God speaks, he speaks by the word of his power or by the word of his potential. Therefore, you can carry anything God says to the kingdom bank of heaven and you can catch it because God will come through. God will bring deliverance. God, God will heal. Watch this now. <laughs> so right now, if you believe that, if you're a child of God, I want you to say, in God, there are no limits and there are no boundaries. <sighs> Come on, say it with me. They're in God. There are no limits. There are no boundaries. So if that is so, I need you to declare this with me right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you have in your bank account. I don't know what you're going through in your job. If that is true, say it with me. I see increase all around me. It may not have manifested in flesh and blood and physical form, but by faith in the realm of God, I see it coming. Look at somebody. Let me ask you this. Watch this now. Here's what faith does. And I know I'm going to have to finish this next week. Watch this. I'm just getting through the introduction. Watch. How many of you have ever ordered anything from Amazon? Come on. My wife, need to, she needs to stand up, lift both hands, both legs, and levitate. That Amazon man knows her by name. Are you with me? Now, how many, when you go online, you go to Amazon, you, you order something that you desire, and then you pay for it online. Watch now. If it's something that you really like, how many of you go and brag to somebody? Girl, I just bought me a so-and-so and so. It's the can I see it? No, it's not here yet, but it's on the way. How do you know it's on the way? Because I paid for it. Listen, that, that's what that's how it is in God. Jesus already paid it on Calvary. And so whatever your needs are. God said, when you ask me, he said, listen, and believe in me, he said, I will bring it to pass. So when God say he's going to bless you with a new job, you go and brag about it. Mm. When God say he's going to heal your body, you go and brag about it. Don't keep that thing to yourself as if I don't know if it's going to happen. If God said it, believe it and go brag on it. Come on, tell somebody, I'm going to brag on God today. Come on, tell somebody, I'm bragging on God today. God loves it when we pray for the impossible. Sometimes he just put us in impossible situations just so we can pray. We can pray and watch him move. He loves when we believe him for things that are beyond our abilities. He's looking for those who have faith, who will still press through in prayer and persevere when the going seems absolutely impossible. God, my dear friend today, is the God of the impossible. When you speak that word impossible, you need to separate it. I had a leadership meeting a while back and I, I, I talked about the I'm possible. When you see impossible, I want you to put a, just a, a slash between I'm and possible because that's what it's all about. Look at somebody say, I'm possible. So when somebody come up to you next time and say, that's impossible. Say, no, no, with God, I'm possible. I'm going over here. Ain't nobody... Ain't, I'm go the next time somebody tells you something is impossible, I want you to tell them, in God, I'm possible. Are you with me? I want you to stop using that word impossible in the negative sense. Use it in the positive sense to say, I'm possible. But with God, all things are possible. God will move through you. God will use you to do what he wants to do inside the earth. Listen, something great is about to come through this house. Something great is about to come through your house. God is about to do the impossible. God is about to take you on a whole nother level. God is about to elevate some things inside of you. You need to understand that today is a pivotal moment. Can you tell somebody today is a day I've never seen before? And it's a day I'll never see again. So in this day, we are operating in the gift of now. Come on, let's tell somebody, I'm operating in the gift of now. 
And, and everything that I embrace now, God is going to bless it. If I walk out of this service today in my now moment, believing that God is going to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think, I believe, God, that you walk out with a smile on your face. No matter how the circumstances look, you smile because God said he's going to do it. God said that everything in him is possible. God said you don't have to worry about a thing. He would never leave us. Can you give God a clap offering today? Love on him. I'm feeling good already. <laughs> Let me give you this power thought. Power thought number one. It says the power of God's possibility thrives in impossible places. Snap it. Write it down. Take it home. Meditate on it. The power of God's possibility thrives in impossible places. Our first inclination when faced with a problem is to operate in probability of the situation, not possibility, because that's human nature. It is there that we need to understand that there is a difference when we are Christians that we believe in God. We need to understand the difference between possibility and probability. Say it with me, possibility and probability. Now, as we begin to look at that, it, there is a difference. Possibility and probability are similar because, as I wipe the sweat out of my eyes, because they both describe something that might occur. But there is a slight difference. Possibility is derived from a Latin word, which means able to be done. Say it with me, able to be done. That's possibility. But when we look at probability, it is derived from another Latin word, which means that there's something that can be done based on that which is provable. In essence, <laughs> if there is tangible sense realm evidence, it might happen. Are you with me? You see, many of us, we think we have faith, but if we're waiting for God to give us something in order for us to have faith, then you're operating in probability. I ain't got much from over here. Possibility says, I don't see it, but I know it's here. I'm just waiting for God to open his hand for it to manifest. Probability says, if there is no empirical evidence, if there is no sense realm evidence, it is not possible until I can see. Are you with me? <laughs> Unless I can see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, or touch it, it's not possible. Watch. Jesus rose from the grave. Just walks in into the upper room. He didn't knock on the door. He just walks in. Nothing says that a door was open. <laughs> he just shows up. Are you with me? So all the disciples, they, they, they heard the ladies talking about it, but now he shows up. You know, the women went to the grave. Y'all don't know the story, right? My question always been, Bishop, where were the men? Where were the... <laughs> I'm talking about the guys that walked with him. I'm talking about the guys who saw him do miracles. Are you with me? Heard him preach. Why were they not expecting him going? I would have been going to that tomb every day. In fact, I think I'd have made a bed there and just slept, brought me some food to eat. Anyway, I digress. So the women tell the men that, you know, he's arisen. They didn't believe him. So Jesus walks in. And, and so one of the disciples, you know, Tommy Thomas, he, he's like, ah, unless I'm able to thrust my hand into his side. Somebody said empirical evidence. You see, his, his faith was based on what he can see, feel, and touch. Church, where God is taking you, you're not going to see it. You just got to believe it. One, two, three. I'm counting claps right now. Two, three, four. <laughs> can, I, can I get an amen over here? Where, where God is taking you personally and where God is taking you corporately, you're not going to see everything, but God will give you a hit. When you take one faith step, he'll open the door. 
Oh, God, I'm going over here. Nobody listen. Listen, when I take another faith step, he's going to open another door. You stand still, no door is going to open. Y'all don't like that, do you? Do you know that we have a responsibility that lies within our faith? We believe and therefore we do. Say it with me. We believe and therefore we do. So doing is what? Walking by faith and not by sight. See, faith is movement. Faith is movement before manifestation happens. So when, when we begin to look at God and we see God saying, here's what I'm going to do for you. And, and Abraham, perfect example. Abraham, I'm going to make you father of many nations. Are you with me? The man is old. His wife is old. And so Abraham can't really fathom what God is saying. Because many, what does, what does that mean? So God has to give him a visual. Now watch this now. He's not yet manifested the children, but he's going to give him a visual so he can have a vision of what's to come. Y'all going to get it in a minute. And so he takes Abraham walking and he says, Abraham, look at, this, look at the sky. How many stars do you see? They're innumerable. He said, put a face on each one of them, so shall your seed be. Are you with me? And then he walks a little bit further on the beach. I believe God likes beaches. I like beaches too. And, and so he says, look down. He said, look at all the sand particles on the beach. Can you count them? He said, no. He said, I want you to put a face on each one of the sand particles. So shall your seed be. Look at somebody say, you got to have vision before it manifests. God can show you what's possible, but you got to walk. Listen, you got to believe. You got to start walking toward it. And then as you walk toward it, God will begin to manifest one step at a time. Manifest one step at a time. The problem with Abraham and Sarah, they tried to help God out. Mm, give me about five minutes. Watch this now. How many of you, be honest, don't raise your hand because I want you to stay safe. How many of you ever tried to help God out? You know what I'm talking about. When you pray for something and God's not moving quick enough for you. Or you pray for something, but you don't feel that God can really do it for you. So you try the other means. Are you with me? Guess what now? So they figure, you know, uh, this is not possible. I think God, what God was saying is that. Here's what God, I think God was saying. God said what he said. Can you say that with me? God said what he said. I'm going to give you my handmaiden. And you go into her and you have children. Now watch now. As soon as that lady got pregnant, she got pregnant. Now watch. A problem arose. Who created the problem? D don't act like you don't know. Sarah and Abraham created their own problem. Okay, I'm going over here. Nobody listening. Go ahead. God said he will put no more on you than you can bear. So I'm thinking that if we're in an unbearable situation, we have to ask ourselves, how much of that did I put on myself by not obeying God? I know this is a tough mess. Let me go on and end this thing. Y'all ain't bit me this morning. Y'all watch this now. Tell somebody you better listen now. <laughs> Our first inclination when faced with a problem is to operate in probability of the situation, not the possibility. And there are differences. And we went through that. But watch this. God doesn't function in nor does he answer prayers based on probability. He moves and operates in the realm, as I said before, a possibility. Now hear me. Human nature will always be subjected to the inner voice that desires to override the voice of God. We've all done it. We've all experienced it. It is our human nature to support what could probably happen over the possibility of what God has determined should happen. But I'm here to challenge you today that we all need to now move into that realm of God. And we, not just, we need to start seeing our lives and our church and everything around us, even our job, in the possibility of God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what's happening. God has ordained you. God has called you. And there's a word in the house for you to help us keep moving forward by faith, fearlessly, until what God has for us. We may not see everything, but God is here. And it's as he see, I want to use his eyes. Watch this now. I'm going to end this with this. Divine possibility is declared in Matthew chapter 19, verse 20. It says, Jesus said, with men, this is impossible. Mm. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. You know, man without God, 
make conclusions. Are you hearing me this morning? And decisions based on probability. Now, can I tell you something about conclusions? It's not in a power thought, but I want to give this to you. Hopefully, you can look at it again. You know what a conclusion is? A conclusion is where people go when they get tired of thinking. That's for free. <laughs> a conclusion is a place where people go when they start get tired of thinking. Or they, you see, because the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Now, when you get tired of keeping your mind on God, you start drawing conclusions. And the conclusion you draw, you start making bad decisions. Can you tell somebody next to you, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He's going to strengthen your hearts. Are you with me? Now, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7 is the perfect narrative to support the principle of divine possibility over human probability. Over the next week or two, I'm going to be talk, discussing the widow and the prophet. The poor widow asked the prophet Elijah to, to help her because of a turbulent situation whose probability seemed impossible. She is facing the mental crisis of possibility versus probability. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to close. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to pick up from here there on next week. The Bible says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. You know that your servant, who is my husband, feared the Lord. Now, my question is, why was she speaking about her faith? Are you with me? My husband. But, but what about your faith? It's good that your husband had faith. But what happens when the people that you depend on are not there? A problem such as this creates a spiritual atmosphere which confronts the reality of one's level of faith. Death builds problems. It provides information about our current spiritual position. A problem always presents an awareness of weak spots inside of our faith. But it is also an opportunity for faith development. It is an opportunity for personal and spiritual growth. I'm going to give you this last power thought today by a well-known author by the name of Vance Havner. He's one of my favorite authors. He said this, The most important thing about a problem is not its solution, but rather the strength and the wisdom we gain in finding the solution. Now, I don't know many people that's going to agree with that, but it's true. You see, when a problem comes inside of your life, God is using it as a testing moment. Because he knows where you are, but sometimes we don't know where we are in faith. And so when a problem comes, God is testing us so we can become aware of the critical areas in our lives that we need to pay attention to and make some adjustments. Now, as I was driving along the highway from Jacksonville on 10 this morning, my wife and I, we noticed that so many trees were down. Some were uprooted. Others were just broken. And I began to think about the islands. They have those palm trees. And, and I noticed that palm trees, when the wind comes, and I don't care how strong it is, when the wind blows, the palm tree, it just bends. But it never uproots. It bends, but it doesn't break. It is because there's something in the makeup of the tree that won't allow it to break. But the other thing about the uprooting, rooting, the, the, the palm tree, its roots go so deep that it will not pull up. But there are some trees that the trees we have in Georgia and Florida, their roots are on the surface. So when a storm comes, it will pull that tree up. Likewise, when we look at our spiritual lives, how deep is your faith? And, and, and how strong is your inner being as a person in God? 
Because when those storms come inside of your life, will you just bend like the palm tree because you know who you believe in? And when the wind stops, you just straighten up? Oh, my God. In fact, you know how I see when I see those palm trees bending, knowing that they're not going to break? It just looked like they're bowing down before God, giving Him praise. Yes, I'm in a storm. Yes, the wind is blowing. Yes, the rain is coming. But I bow down before you. And I'm standing strong. And when the winds pass and the rains recede, it just straightens back up and give him more praise. How many spiritual palm trees I have in the house? Why don't you just stand to your feet this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. We'll finish this up. I'm going to talk about this widow next week. I want you to be a spiritual palm tree. Because storms are never, they're never going away until Jesus takes us out of this world. So we better prepare. We better make sure that we have, we have the right kind of stuff so that we may bend but not break. And that we're never uprooted in our faith. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I want the people of God praying right now. Father, I thank you for your word today. May your word continue to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our pathway. May it continue to lead and guide us into all truth. God, strengthen us today as we have heard your word. We are so grateful because you have protected us through the natural storm. Now, God, we're asking you for that same protection in our spiritual storms, storms of life. God, ground us. Keep us. Elevate our faith. Help us to walk in the realm of possibilities. And when fear raises its ugly head up in our lives, let us be quick to extinguish it. By faith today, Father, from my left to my right, I'm praying for your favor over their lives. I'm praying for a covering, oh God, over their life. A renewed sense of being in this house today. I'm praying that you would anoint them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet with a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. God, I'm praying today, oh God, that you would lift them up where they came in heaven. God, that you would lift them up today, dear Father. God, where there was confusion and anxiety and depression in their minds, God, I pray that you give them that peace you say would pass all understanding. In the, in the name of Jesus, we come against that spirit of depression. We come against spirits of anxiety. God, right now, we are praying your very best upon your people. Bring healing and deliverance, oh God, over this house. God, you made them. You know all about them. You know them one by one, dear Father. Whatever their specific needs are, we pray that you touch them right now afresh. When they walk out of this house today, dear God, let them walk out with their heads hung high. Not in pride, but in holy confidence, knowing that everything ain't going to be all right. Everything is all right. That, Father, in your perfect timing, you're going to release the blessing. So, Father, today, in advance, we give you thanks. In advance, we give you all the honor and all the glory. And in advance, we're going to brag about what you're doing for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's amazing people said... Amen. Come on and give God a clap offering wherever you are. We'll pick back up on this on next week. God bless you. God bless you.